great morning, great morning. This is a day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Doris Allen, thanking God uh, for another opportunity to share the word of God and another opportunity to share what the Lord has put in my spirit. And um, I think it's important as believers to um, open up and share because the scripture did clearly declares that we are many members of but we are of the same body, and uh, God does not give everything to one person. He has the uh, fivefold gifts of the uh, ministry working uh, in harmony, praise, hopefully by the grace of God, we're working in harmony. Um, so every vessel has, has been given a talent and a gift, and so I'm just thanking God for uh, him allowing me to go into the word and giving me some understanding. It has been a, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And so I just thank God for this blessed opportunity. Um, today we're going to be talking about two major events that will take uh, place in the lives of the world and the lives of the believer. The rapture itself and the second coming of Christ. And uh, they're not the same events. And so we want to go into the scriptures. Uh, the Lord did drop a word in my spirit a couple of days ago. And I've been, uh, actually, I believe it was the Lord because as soon as I was reading the little document, I woke up immediately. And I, and I think sometimes when you are dreaming, uh, you try to remember your dreams at the end, but then sometimes they, they fade away. But this particular dream, as soon as I started reading the document, um, it, uh, I woke up immediately, and so I ended up writing the word down. It was just one word in the document. I got to read the like the first or second word in the document, and so I woke up immediately, put it on my phone as I usually do, and I, I'm, I'm confident to know that God is directing a lot of times these little words that he puts in my spirit, and so um, if we don't believe that God is guiding us, then we, we're in trouble. Hallelujah. If we don't believe that he speaks to us, then we're in trouble. And so I, I do know and through all these years from 24 up to over 40 some years, God has made it clear to me that he does speak to his children. They do hear his voice. And not everything we hear is the Lord because we have our own spirit. We have the adversary. We have um, the things that are going on in the world. But there are a lot of times when you do get something that, that's really outside of what you would be doing or thinking, you know that this is the Lord. And it sends me to the scriptures. It sends me to the dictionary. It sends me to study. And so I'm just thanking God for this um, this little message this morning. And I pray that it be a blessing to those who do attack, um you know, log on and, and share it. So let us pray. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for your mighty hand upon us. Thank you for your abiding presence of that Holy Spirit. Thank you for leading and guiding us into all truth. For the word declared, the Holy Spirit will show us things to come. I thank you, hallelujah, Lord God, for opening up our understanding, O oh God, that we will know the hope of your calling, the riches of your inheritance in his saints when you raise up Christ from the dead. We thank you for the word of God, for it is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. You have commanded us to search the scriptures, for in them we think we have eternal life, but they are they which to testify of thee. And your word is already written and settled in heaven. And praise God, hallelujah. We thank you this morning, O oh God, for the understanding that we will have, that we might be guided in this season and time, for we commit ourselves into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, what I want to talk a little bit about, like I said, is the rapture and the second coming. And uh, the word that the Lord gave me, what well, I believe it was the Lord giving it to me, was decapitations. Um, decapitations. And I was reading in the dream or in, at that state, I was starting to read an official document. And in the official document, the second word in it was decapitation. And the word, as I was looking at the document, it started... I started reading it by spelling it D, uh, E, C, and then I got to a decapitation. And so immediately I woke up. And so I, I have been pondering that word. I do know the scriptures talk about in Revelations that there will be a number of saints decapitated for the word of God, saints. But um, the, I, it took me off into the study of the rapture and the second coming. And so... Uh, in Matthews, the 24th chapter, uh, we all familiar with the Olive Discourse uh, scripture. It's being taught many times. Uh, Matthews 24, it talks about um, 
uh, the, the signs of the times of Christ coming, uh, talks about things we should look for. But I want to pick up on one verse. And if Matthews runs from verses 1 all the way down, I mean, it's pretty long, it's 51 uh, verses of chapter 24 of Matthews. But I want to pick up something out of verse uh, 39. And you got a chance to go back, read all of 20, the, the 24th chapter. Many of, uh, of the uh, pastors and those who are teaching the last days <laughs> refer to Matthew 24 because it gives you a lot of insight. But I want to pick up on verse 39. It says, um, well, we're going to go back to verse 37. But as in the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were all eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Verse 39. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. I think it's important to home in on the fact that they didn't know. Why didn't they know? When Noah was preaching. Noah was giving them the word. They had a visible sign of a man doing something unusual, but they did not know until the flood came and took them all away. And it says that it, uh, and it shall be in the same as it was in the days of Noah. It shall also the, uh, be in the days of, that we're living in now. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, and were giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, until the very day. You hear people say, we don't know the sea, we don't know the day, we don't know the, um, the year, we don't know the month, we don't know. Okay, they didn't know either. Okay, but the scripture clearly declares that the Holy Spirit will show us things to come and we should not be caught unaware. So we're going to go now into um, the, uh, the dealing with the rapture. The rapture is talked about in the in the book of Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verses, uh, I'm going to read verses um, 16 all the way down to verse 17. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. first. Then we which are alive shall remain, hallelujah, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we be with the Lord Hallelujah. So what we're homing in on here is the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the ark, uh, archangel and with the trump of God. And it talks about uh, we shall be caught up, caught up together with them, uh, with the dead in Christ, caught up. So the first event that will happen is the, 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 the church shall be caught up out of the earth. We shall go up out of the earth. And if you study the scripture, it talks about in um, Corinthians. We're going to go a little bit to Corinthians. It talks a little bit about 1 Corinthians, the uh, 15th chapter, verse 51, gives us a little bit more insight about that first event. The rapture is not going to be a time when the world will be, like you said, no, they knew not. It will not be a time when they will be looking for, for his return. There would not be a time when they'll be eating and drinking and marrying and just having, uh, just going about life. Pray, praise God. And they will not be aware of the time that when their rapture takes place. In 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 51 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruptible, and the mortal must put on immortality. So the event of the rapture is going to occur just like that in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. When we go over to Thessalonians, the second chapter, second Thessalonians, the second chapter, hallelujah, it begins to talk here a little bit more about the rapture. 
2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, verses 3 through 10 says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the gathering together unto him, mean going up to him, gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind nor troubled by, hallelujah, spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, nor by, nor by letter as from us as the day of Christ is at hand. Let, so in other words, don't be troubled because when the time comes, the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, who is the indwelling one in our spirit now, when it's time, praise God, the Holy Spirit will quicken us in a moment in the twinkling of eye. It goes on to say, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, that day, except there be a falling away first, and that man of sin shall be revealed. Hallelujah. And the son of perdition shall come. So this is talking about the day of the Lord. So the day of the Lord is not the day of the Lord is when the Lord has his day. You know, you always talk about, you know, every uh, um, man has his day. In other words, we hear a lot of people say, well, you know, uh, when you talk about Jesus Christ, they talk about him as if, you know, um, he's not making his power known. He's not he's not speaking up. You know, even when he came in the first the first advent of Christ, he came. The Bible said he he didn't even speak a mumbling word. He they questioned him uh, um, through everything, but it says that he he did open not his mouth. He didn't say a word. He even though when they beaten was beating him and and and, and questioning whether or not he was a son of God, he didn't say a thing. But the day of the Lord, the time will come when Jesus will speak. He will speak. And everybody who, hallelujah, they say every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. So the day of the Lord is not the, the time of the rapture. The day of the Lord is when the Lord will have his say. That is the day of the Lord. It says, it says um, um, as the day of the Lord is at hand, don't let anybody fool you that the day of the Lord is at hand. It says, let no man deceive you by any means for the day of for that day, which is the day of the Lord, shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed. So before the day of the Lord, when the Lord has his say, the man of sin will be revealed first, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not. That when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Hallelujah. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked, that then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Didn't I say Jesus is going to speak with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and sign and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So when the time comes, this, this is to talk about the second coming, the second coming when the Lord shall destroy with the, he says in Revelation, you see him coming with the sword out of protruding out of his mouth, which is the word of God. He is going to destroy him with one word. He's going to have his say. And when God comes, it talks about when he comes in that second coming, hallelujah, his feet is going to come down on the Mount of Olives. And we're going to Ze uh, Zechariah and Zephaniah because that talks about that second coming. But before the second coming and the day when God will deal with the man of sin, will deal with Satan, there will be a great falling away. There will be a, uh, a, a time when, when uh, the, it says wickedness will, will, uh, uh, will flourish. And so we know we are waiting now for the rapture in Thessalonians when it shall come. It talks about that when God comes for his bride, it will be uh, at midnight. It will be with a time when it says uh, the, the virgins, the virgins are the ones who will be a part of the bridal party. 
It says, go ye out to meet him. Go ye out. And so that, that first uh, 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 time, it's going to be not announced. It's going to be when the Holy Spirit, in fact, it says here, what was holy, the, the Antichrist, is the Holy Spirit himself. Now we know what withholdeth that he might be revealed. So what withholdeth him is the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit holds back the revealing of the Antichrist. He, he holds it back until the bride. Remember the Philadelphia church. He said, I will keep you from the hour of temptation. When the adversary is revealed in the earth, it is a time of temptation because he is not going to allow souls on the earth to eat, to buy, to sell, to have commerce, to have anything without his name, number, or mark. And so that's where you're going to have a great falling away because if people have missed the rapture, and how can you be raptured in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, if you don't have the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. It said the Holy Ghost will quicken you. Quicken means he will, he will uh, uh, make you alive. So we cannot get out of this earth. And remember the virgins, some of them had prepared, they were waiting, but the only thing they didn't have, they had their lamps. They was waiting with the other ones, but they didn't have no oil. You're not going to get out of here without the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the oil. He is the oil. That's why we talk about the anointing. Hallelujah. You need the power of God to get out of this earth. You cannot just have, yo, know, I'm waiting for the Lord. And, and this, you got to have, you got to be full. In fact, the, the virgins who did have, it says, the foolish virgin said to the other, give us some of your oil. They said, we don't have enough. Because we got to be caught up and we have to be caught up. And you need the full indwelling of the Spirit of God to be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. You need to, I, I listened to Bishop yesterday and he said, it's time to think about yourself. I mean, I don't, he didn't say it in those words, but you, it's time to go solo. It's time to realize if you got to have the God on the inside, we've been praying for people, we've been talking to people, we've been doing all that we can do. But see, what stood out to me in Matthew 24, when it said they do knew not, there is a lot of uh, hijacking of the truth. We got the rainbow. Now that has been hijacked. The rainbow is over the throne of God. The rainbow is a sign and a symbol that God gave Noah that he would not destroy the earth anymore by water, but praise God. So that is a sign. That symbol's been hijacked. A simple thing like, you know, uh, if somebody is married, it's been hijacked. It's been hijacked. It's been hijacked. We have a lot of things that's been hijacked. So therefore, in this new generation of people, if they don't realize, I remember when I came up, I had an old dictionary, the word gay. It means happy. It don't mean that now. Okay? So we got, there's a lot of things that's been hijacked. A lot, in fact, it talks about, and there's a time when the truth is being cast down to the ground. So we're in that season and time now. But what is sure what is a sure foundation is the word of God. The rapture will take place first and then the second coming. The rapture is talked about in 1 Thessalonians, the 4th chapter, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. The second coming, we're going to Zephaniah. Hallelujah. We're going to Zechariah and then Zephaniah. Zechariah talks about it in the 14th chapter about the second coming. Different from the rapture now. The second coming, it says, Behold, the day of the Lord. Remember, we talk about the day of the Lord. When God going to have his say, you're going to see him in the soil of his mouth, and he's going to destroy, according to the scripture, he, he is going to destroy, hallelujah, with, the, with, the, with the, his mouth. Hallelujah. It says, uh, The wicked one shall be destroyed, in verse 8 of 2 Thessalonians 2. Then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So when Jesus coming, going back over to Zechariah, that day, the day of the Lord is, I'm telling you, different from the rapture. Okay. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. This is Zechariah, the 14th chapter. 
and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. And I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses ruffled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations. That's what we're going to find out when he begins to come down and deal with the adversary. Then he shall, uh, then when he fought as he did, as he fought in the day of battle and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. Hallelujah. And half of the mountains shall be removed toward the north and half toward the south. And hallelujah. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azale. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled before the earthquake in the days of Uriah and of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. So the church is coming with him when he comes in the second coming. Okay. All the saints with thee. So however, shall we come when he comes to make himself known to the adversary? He's going to come with the saints. This is what scripture say. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be, be uh, shall not be clear nor dark. It shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at the evening time it shall be light. And you go on and read a little bit more of that in Hayabosheth, in Zechariah. The saints are going to come with him. Now we go over to Zephaniah. Zephaniah, hallelujah. The second chapter, I wanted to read a little bit of Zeph Zephaniah. Zephaniah. Gather yourselves together. This is Zephaniah preaching. He says, gather yourself together, O old nation, not desire, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass, and the chaff before the fierce anger of the Lord cometh upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Seek ye the Lord, all ye high abortion, all ye meek of the earth, which have fought his, uh, who has wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be you shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. So he's saying here, and there's a lot of scriptures about that. Gather yourselves together. Hallelujah. Get ready because God is coming. Hallelujah. And I'm going to go over to um, the third chapter of Zephaniah. Therefore, wait ye upon me, says the Lord, until the day that when I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the good Gather the nations together that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger. Hallelujah. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Hallelujah. Then you go on and read that. Zephaniah, the second chapter, and Zephaniah, the third chapter, talks clearly about the saints coming back with the Lord, with all the saints coming back with him. His feet coming down, and when it talks about the east gate, he's going to come and descend upon the area of Jerusalem, and the mountains is going to cleave. Hallelujah. And the east gate, remember now, the Muslim nation has put, uh, 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 he has put, they have put some uh, um, graves there, thinking, okay, if he's a priest, of, uh, he shouldn't be defiled, and the, these graves are going to prevent him. But the scripture had told us that the dead is going to rise first. God going to open up them graves, and he will not have to be passed by no dead, because when he comes, prior to that, he is going to open up the grave. Now, the time frame between the revealing of the, uh, of the Antichrist and the rapture, in fact, it tells us in Thessalonians, what keeps the Antichrist from being revealed is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will quicken the body of Christ and call us out together to meet the Lord in the air. And after we all meet the Lord, there will be a time, hallelujah, where we will be with him in heaven. And that's where you will have the, uh, the judgment seat of Christ, where Christ will be rewarding the, the body of Christ with the crowns. You know, uh, 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 there's five crowns that he will be giving. Of course, all of us will receive eternal life, but the works that we do, we will be rewarded. Whether you have a pastoral crown or whether you have a crown of righteousness, you have, you're going to get a crown. We are kings 
It says, and priests. So you will have a crown. There will be no male or female. They asked uh, Jesus when, when, uh, in the time, uh, whose wife would this woman be? Because uh, uh, um, she had married seven different brothers. He said, you don't know not. They're going to be like the angels. So there's going to be no, uh, whether it's male or female. No, we're going to have crowns, you know, everything. We're going to have new bodies. Hallelujah. And then when we come back, we're going to come back with the Lord. Hallelujah. When he gets ready with the brightness of his coming and the sword of his mouth to deal with the adversary. What's happening now is mixed messages, hijacking of the truth. Hallelujah. Distractions, many kinds of distractions, distracting us from the truth. Stay in the word. Shunda. Let the word get in you because in this season and time, even that Black Lives Matter situation, uh, this being hijacked too. The children walk around with hijacked, and it's promoting something else besides Black Lives Matter. It is promoting something else, okay? The devil is a liar. He's been there from the beginning. Scripture says the devil is a liar, and he's the father of lies. And he's hijacking so many things. Don't try to hijack the, 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 uh, uh, the rainbow. Don't try to hijack uh, uh, um, different things causes listen stay in the word shunda let the word stay in you this is a time it says in Matthew 24 39 they knew not they knew not hallelujah and the scripture declares God would not we that we be ignorant so we are not supposed to be ignorant when the Holy Spirit will show us things to come two events will happen the rapture and you need the oil you need the anointing. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the power of God to quicken this flesh. Hallelujah. To quicken this flesh. Hallelujah. I'm praying for myself. And Bishop said Sunday, it's time to go solo. I'm telling you, it's time to talk about go Sunday. It's time to get ready. Jesus is coming. I got that word decapitations. And that is a study about the Levites. They are going to be Levites, okay? They're going to be Levites. But they're the Levites who have not completely come into the inner chamber of God. They have been ministering to the people. And God had already promised Abraham that his seed could not be numbered. So they will go through the furnace of a, a, a fiery furnace to be purged and, and purified. They will go through... Um, uh, uh, where they will, their garments, as Daniel said, many of their garments will be made white through the things that they have suffered. In fact, let's talk about in Daniel, talking about um, the time of purifying them. And Daniel talks about their garments being made white through the things that they they suffer. And so there, there, there are. I'm praying. I'm not in that number. I want to be in the number in the bride. Okay. I want to be the bride. Hallelujah. I don't want to be the bridesmaids. I want to be the bride. And so it behooves. I mean, God knows our heart. And so we are praying that we are ready when He comes. Um, that we don't have to go through the uh, fiery furnace to be purified, to be made white. In fact, in Revelation it said they had uh, overcome by the power of their testimony, and they were beheaded. They were beheaded. And so there's a lot of Christians, hallelujah, just saying, well, you know, um, some people say if you missed the rapture, but according to them, now the rapture to me, it, it happens in a moment in a twinkling of an eye, but I don't know how God timing is because one year, one day is like a thousand years. So I don't know how God is, is, is going to, to deal with the first resurrection all I know is blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Um, and then upon those souls that the second resurrection has no power. The second resurrected souls who will be uh, sleeping for a thousand years while the first resurrected souls will be uh, uh, inhabiting this earth. Praise God. The second resurrected souls will rise to the, the great white throne judgment will be judged for their deeds. And then one of the main things is they refuse to accept Christ. And so that is one of the biggest sins. In fact, when Christ came, hallelujah, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came that all men might have life, and that life is in Christ. Outside of Christ, there is not going to be any life. You're not going to be in any way in near heaven if, you don't, if you're not in Jesus Christ. In fact, he's our high priest forever. 
The scripture says forever. Forever we will be in Christ. Hallelujah. Forever we will be a part of Christ in the, in the presence of God. And so I pray that you realize, as Matthew said, they knew not until. We don't want to be ignorant. Uh, there's a lot of mixed messages. A lot of things have been hijacked. A lot of things have been distracted. Get in the word. Let the word get in you. And I pray that you understand the rapture is coming. Pray for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. If you have confessed with your mouth and believe in your heart that God, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The Bible says you shall be saved. Hallelujah. So when you confess and you ask God himself, because salvation comes only by Jesus Christ. The only way you're going to get the Holy Ghost is Jesus is going to give you it. Jesus is the one who baptized you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Ask him. Once you have confessed, and in fact, he said, the day that you seek me with your whole heart, you shall find me. I'm not far from any of you. I'm, I, I, even as uh, uh, nigh unto thee, even as in thy mouth. So it's with your mouth confession is made, okay? In the heart you believe unto salvation. So confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Talk to him. Ask him to fill you. I'm asking him to fill me. Bishop said, go solo. I'm praying. I'm praying for my soul salvation. Hallelujah. I'm, of course, we're still praying for one another. But this is the time. It's getting close. I don't want to be left here. And I know, I believe the church is longer. And Revelation said, the spirit and the bride said, come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. you got to be crying for God to come. You know, people leaving here because it's getting darker. It's getting bleaker. It's getting terrible. And so we are praying that we'll be strong. We'll be full of the Holy Ghost. And we'll be able to stand in these last and evil days. Remember what Matthew 24, 39 said. Read Matthew th uh, 24th chapter. Uh, Zechariah the 14th chapter, Zephaniah the, the second and the third chapter, um, uh, Rapture talks about in Thessalonians the fourth chapter, First Corinthians the 15th chapter, uh, going to second Thess uh, Thessalonians the second chapter. All of these talks about two different events. And going over it tells us clearly that the saints gonna come back with the Lord. And so I pray that you be ready and. Uh, we're we looking for his coming. So those who look for him shall he, re he reveal himself the second time. And so we have to be like those virgins looking for him, expecting him to come. And so uh, not be like these people who are, who are eating, drinking, and married and knew not until the time that the, the um, God sent the flood. And so we, we're not to be caught unaware. The Holy Spirit is here to guide us. And so we need to be talking with the Holy Spirit, reading the scriptures, and standing in the word. Let us pray. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise for this word. We pray that it's an eye-opener and an awakening call to our spirit to know that you're soon to come. Even though there's a lot of things that's been hijacked and, and a lot of things has been, been, uh, been twisted and turned, Lord God, and, and trying to cast the truth to the ground, but your word is ever settled in heaven. Hallelujah. And it cannot be shamed. Change, Lord God, not one jot, not one tittle shall fall to the ground till it all be performed. For we commit ourselves into your hands. We pray a hedge of protection around all those who are seeking you, Lord God. Thank you for your angels encamped around our battles, Lord God. Fill us with Haya Shunda once again with thy Holy Spirit, Lord God. Enjoy, endow us, O God, with thy presence and endow us, O God, with your Holy Spirit. For we give ourselves to you. We denounce every hidden sin and fault. And I commit ourselves, could we commit ourselves into your hands in Jesus' name? Amen. Amen. So I pray that this has been blessed. Push the uh, like button. Share it. Um, you know, a lot of times in the Bible say the time will come when people will not endure sound doctrine. They don't want they want to they want to be entertained. They want to have their little faces, selfies, and stuff like that. But all that stuff is not gonna get us to heaven. We need the word of God. So encourage those who are preaching the word. I try to encourage them. You know, I don't need a lot of politics, you know, talking about all this. You know, it's the word of God hid in your heart. Hallelujah. That's going to keep you. Because when the time comes to be tested in trial, you can talk about politics all you want. But them demons already know that. They, already, they, they, they are already pushing that stuff. And so we need to be mindful of these mixed messages. Let the word of God dwell in your heart richly. Okay? Walk in victory, get into the word, talk to the Lord, and continue to pray much one for one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Hopefully this word is a bless. Push the like button and share. And uh, as long as the Lord give me this little unction, there, sometimes I'm in the valley. I was talking the other day about being in the valley. 
I feel like it's, it's a waste of time. But I'm okay. Try to keep going. Today I feel uplifted. My spirit is encouraged to uh, share. And um, that decapitation is coming. And it is coming to a lot of souls on the earth. They got these here coffins and stuff they, uh, 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 that they're buying. And they. I think the guillotine, America has purchased so many guillotines. So these things are true. <laughs> these are true things that's happening in our current time. You can look on that. Guillotines and, ca and caskets and stuff. So uh, we want to be in the rapture. Now those who are left here. Between the rapture and the second coming of Christ when he was descend, and he's going to come down, it says, with the saints. So those um, beheaded saints are coming back with him, too. They're going to come back, too. So don't ask me how exactly going to happen, but there are two clear events in the scriptures. The thing is, try to be in the rapture. I want to be in the rapture. And I don't want to be just one of the bridemaids because half of them was left. Okay? Let us stay in the word and let us ask God to, to, to take us home when he calls. When he, he, when he says, and he call our name, we want to be somewhere answering. Okay? Love you. God loves you too. In Jesus' name, amen.